Hello, good evening, and welcome. You've just entered the arena. I'm Michael Corrin. And being a Friday, our TW3 monologue, that was the week that was. You see, you get it. Now, we have to start with how well our teachers, social workers, educational bureaucrats, and police officers are doing these days. Yeah! It's the Kitchener story. A four-year-old girl draws a picture of a gun. The teacher panics. Social workers panic. Police panic. The father is arrested, strip-searched, abused, humiliated. And nobody's willing to apologize. And then, ugh, an invincibly pompous educational leader in the local area explains that we, we care because, quote, we co-parent. Meaning, I presume, that it's fine for dads and families to be attacked and trashed. Look, you fool, you don't co-parent at all. You're paid by parents and other taxpayers to do a clerical job, which is generally unnecessary, but you're so inflated with pride and self-importance, you can't see the obvious and the grating injustice of the whole thing. The teacher should be fired, the principal should be fired, the cops should be fired, and there should be a public apology to the entire family. Of course, if the man had been a terrorist, there would be financial compensation and mass contrition by now, wouldn't there? Teachers, teach. Social workers, stop little Muslim girls being murdered by their fathers. Police, arrest gangsters. And educational bureaucrats, shut up. The problem is that most of these people acted like robots, which is exactly what got some people into trouble when some calls were allegedly made during the last election to some liberal voters confusing the poor souls. Oh, please. This is really a non-story, expanded and made what it isn't by anti-Tory hacks. The only influence robots had on the last election was the influence of the robot who led the Liberal Party. I am Michael Ignatieff. I have charisma. I am Michael Ignatieff. I have charm. Anyway, some Jewish groups became very angry when it was revealed that Mormons baptize dead Jewish people, including Holocaust victims. Well, actually, they baptize all non-Mormons. Look, I'm not a Mormon. I reject their theology. But they do this not because they hate Jews, but because they love them. You don't like it? Fine. Don't become a Mormon. I also find it disturbing that some Jewish people who do not really believe in God, who reject Talmudic teaching, who seldom, if ever, go to synagogue, insist on their spouses converting to Judaism. I think it's insulting both to non-Jewish people and to the integrity and beauty of Judaism. But we all know it happens. Could it be, I mean, could it just be that there are misguided people in all religions? Finally, a friend of the show and a fine and great man, Andrew Breitbart, died at the appallingly young age of 43. He was funny, brave, clever, kind, and a vital part of the new conservative political movement in North America. He will be missed by all those who knew him and agreed with him and not missed at all by those who, who, who he exposed and opposed. And you know what? It's the latter, those he opposed and exposed, uh, not missing him, which will please him all the more, I think. Rest in peace, my friend, and make sure those complacent liberals in heaven are given a really hard time. Oh, hold on. I forgot. There are no liberals in heaven, are there?